From the creators of Millie and Molly comes Run and Gun, starring Willie Run and Wally Gun. Everything in Carlton Hanley's world has to either be alliterative or rhyme. He must be a nightmare to live with. Carlton, can you take the bins out for me, please, love? Ask properly, my sweet. Oh. Oh. The bins are in sin as they begin to brim with the putridity within. I cannot take this on the chin. Please, my next of kin, take out the goddamn motherfucking bin. Oh, happy to my baby. I should have listened to my mother. Some multi-room good old-fashioned pew-pew action here. I've been looking forward to the release of this game since I've seen the very first screenshot of it, and I have not been disappointed. Hold on, girl, now wait just a minute. I've got something to say, you should hear it. Oh, I'm happy to make time for your feelings. You have to admit, I already do. This game is practically flawless in my opinion, so I can jump straight in with the only negative comment I have to say about it, and that is that it's short. But when you take a step back and look at how much has been packed in, this must be working the available memory harder than I work my plate at a self-service carvery. Very demanding, I'm a very greedy man. That's it, there you go. That's all my criticisms of Run and Gun. Hey, Gepto idiot, I heard you were doing poetry, so I've come to offer up my services. Virgo! Ah, no mate, it was just a one-off bit. What are you doing here? How'd you even get in? Your back door wasn't locked in any serious way, so I, uh... I don't care, mate, you're not in my bubble. Get out. But I came all the way from... I don't care where you came from. Get out! Any regular viewers will know that much more than graphics or gameplay or sound, the thing that really gives me a gap tooth hard on is concept and story. On the face of it, it's just a go to an alien planet and kill the aliens type of deal. But it's in the details of the story that gets my excitement bubbling like a gremlin's back in a jacuzzi. Starting with our two-in-one character, Willy Run and Wally Gun. Carlton, will you make sure that the kids brush their teeth before they go to bed, my dear? If you ask properly. Oh my god! I bid that the kids rid the shit of their dentures. Slay the ballet of a fray that betrays molar hygiene. Before they close their eyelids, before they pray, before they dream. Please, my husband, make sure the fucking incisors are clean. <laughs> I could take your leave you at this point, I really honestly, fuck. Uh, <clears throat> are you doing poetry, lad? Get out, fucking lockdown, mate. Show some discipline. Willie and Wally are two just average infantrymen, totally unremarkable, until a military experiment which has gone wrong slams them both together and they become a super soldier well what's so special about that you ugly bastard i'll tell you what's so special about that you cheeky cunt
hardly is used storytelling to satisfy a technical need. Willie and Wally have separate skills. Willie can air jump, something strongly endorsed by Woody Harrelson. And Wally has the more powerful long range weapon. Okay, arguably Wally doesn't have any special skills of any time, he just has a big fucking gun. And really, Willie could satisfy that skill shortage just by having the gun. Well, maybe the gun's too heavy for Willie? I don't know. But whatever the reason, whatever the reason is, Wally has the big gun. The player can change between the two characters just to suit the situation that they find themselves in, just by holding down on the joystick for a second. What happened in the military experiment that would make the gun change when Willie and Wally change? Get the fuck out of here, Fergal! Bubbling! Bubbling! And wipe down everything you touch with those wee wipes before you go. Fergal's reading too much into it. It's fine. Just accept it. Nobody gives Nintendo shit about Mario's dungarees changing colour whenever he touches a flyer, so I'm not going to give Handley any shit about this. My point is this. Handley could have just had uh, one character with a big gun that double jumped, but he didn't. He wanted interchangeable features activated by the player. He could have done that with technical wizardry and left it at that, but he went with backstory as the tool to achieve it. And that, in my book, is worth commenting on. Well played, Handley, old boy. Well played. So, we've met our protagonists. Into the plot. The plot is pretty standard, well rehearsed, a well trodden path. Alien threat, protect the earth. But there is something about the details in it. In particular, the unit running gun or fighting it. Unit is called commandos on military missions, ominously dangerous often requiring extermination. You're no doubt aware of that Archimedes quote, give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to place it and I will move the world. That's the kind of leverage we're talking about The Carlton Handley's used to squeeze this acronym into this joke. Well played old Bean, well played. It's not too often you'll see an acronym with commas in it, so don't miss this opportunity to let your eyeballs bathe in the warmth of a man throwing rule books onto the campfire just to squeeze in a joke. Of course I am going to love this, of course I am. And how many soldiers in this special unit? 64, 64, of course 64. And now it's off to Bantea to kick some alien ass. Bante is beautiful, the tone created by the palette choice of the planet surface and the sky is very reminiscent to original Star Trek or at a push, the eye popping Marscape from Total Recall. I believe that the artwork was designed by Handley and drawn by Saul Cross. I know that's true of the enemies but as far as the scenery goes I'm just having a punt here that it's consistent and Cross really does deserve a nod of respect for his contribution to this game, especially the artwork but also for his part as a catalyst for the project, according to Indie Retro News. The subterranean areas where the bulk of the play takes place has not been spared the artist's brush either. The depth created by the sparing use of colour plays across the eyeballs effectively, like there's light in here somewhere, but not much. The subtlety of the artwork to create these effects is common enough in Commodore 64 games, but I am of the school of thought that when it is done well as it is here, a glass should be raised to the artist. Leo, do the deed, wee man. The last Carlton Handley game I reviewed, I commented on how cute the things that I had to kill were. And again, again? Is this like a fetish or something, Handley? Actually, don't tell me. I think I'm happy or not knowing. I do like the design and execution of the characters. I do love the Bantes. Look at them. They look like what I imagine it would look like if Bert from Sesame Street could lay eggs. The Aluminium. He's fucking adorable! Even if he is without question one of the most anxiety accelerating characters ever to escape the circuits of a C64. This fella imitates your every move, and I mean every move, exactly to the square centimetre, but behind by a second or two. Stand still for two seconds and this little dick is gonna get you 
I don't think I've ever seen an enemy pattern like this before. I'm not saying it's never happened, it's just that I've never seen it. If you have, let me know in the comments below. I'm interested. In my life, this is totally unique and original, and I love it. Even if he is a little cunt. Run and Gun themselves are nicely done. They have an idle animation which will be familiar to fans of one of Handley's last big C64 games, Millie and Molly. From now on, I'm calling that the Handley Bounce. If I ever meet him, I'll be doing that bounce the whole time he's talking to me. No Carlton, I don't want to go to the animal shelter and watch them put down puppies, but you do you though. Run reminds me a lot of Johnny from The Karate Kid, and Gun reminds me not only of one of my favourite supporting characters of film of all time, he also makes me feel like him. Oh, long tall Sally, she's so sweet, she gave me everything, and Uncle Johnny, oh baby. Gameplay, something a little different about the gameplay in this game. Jump is the fire button, and holding up shoots. This took me a while to get used to, as because, well, you're all probably Commodore 8-bit micro players, so you know the rules. Up is jump. We're getting a real sweat on here with how many rule books that Hanley's just tossing into that bonfire. But you know what? It works. Not only does it work, it works well. In a game where precision platforming is the key skill, Handley removed the chains around the ankles caused by joystick gameplay by a simple button swap. And now that I'm used to it, I want all games to be like this. The music! Here we go, back to Massage and Saul Cross's ego slash nutsack. The music fits this game like a glove. Everything that's happening on the screen, the soundtrack goes along with it beautifully. Not only that though, on its own, it's superb. As you'll often hear me talking about in private, the people making music on Commodore 64's today are creating symphonies. If you could take the spirit of Starship Troopers, grind it up, smash it through a SID chip and flatten it onto an LP, this is what it would sound like. Jaunty, it's dynamic, it's 80s action. For the sake of my own dignity, I'm gonna back up away from the music here because I don't wanna go into work tomorrow with my breath smelling like Saul Cross's asshole. You have ears, you know how to enjoy music. You don't need my help here on this one. You owe it to yourself and you owe it to your C64 to get this game. Go on, it's only three dollars. What's that in real money? About 6p? Something like that? Fingers crossed there will be a physical release for this game. Everything else crossed that it will be on cassette. We don't like buying cartridges, they're too expensive for me. You can get your copy from Carlton Handley's itch.io page. A link for that will be dwelling about in the description of this video somewhere. Also, like, share and subscribe and find me on the socials. Fucking superb work by Carlton Handley and Saul Cross yet again. Well, that's all from me for this evening. Good night!